Okay, so today we are going to take a look at the Boeing 247D in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This uh, has just come out in the last couple of days. It's one of the first study level flight simulator aircraft and I actually think it's great fun. It's probably notable though for things it doesn't have rather than for things it does have. So this plane is straight out of the 1930s. So when you look around inside, let's just turn that um, yoke back on. When you look around inside, it's more notable for the things it doesn't have. So there's no comm radios, there's no nav radios, um, there's no electric starters for the engines. Everything has to be hand cranked from outside. There is a navigation radio of sorts. I'm not going to get into it today, but this uses Morse code to tune into beacons that don't exist anymore. So this aircraft actually simulates the existence of those beacons as well. So you can fly by listening audibly to Morse code sequences to navigate by. But today we're going to fire the plane up by hand, take it for a circuit and just see how it works. We're not going to go for a big flight anywhere. OK, so let's get that yoke out of the way again and let's explore what you have to do to get this plane running. So if we go and open this um, clipboard that's on the panel up here, you can see there's an engine startup page on the clipboard. So we've got an assisted start. This means the engineers will run around outside doing the bits and pieces they need to do. But that still leaves us with things to do inside the cockpit. So first things first, let's go and look. We've got some switches here on the central console for the fuel tank, fuel tank selector and for the engine distributor dial for that. Uh, if we go and have a quick look, actually we can see it in the notepad rather than showing you the Microsoft dialogue. If we go to the previous page in here, you can see how much fuel you've got in the tanks. If you change that and say make it so, some notifications will appear. So just to show you that, if I say make that so, you can see this engineer is refilling the left main fuel tank outside for us. And then he's closing it down, opening the right filler, closing it down, opening the auxiliary filler, closing the... So it shows you all the jobs that are being done around the outside of the aircraft, which is really quite cool. Okay, so what does this all mean? So there are flywheels and hand cranks on the engines outside. So an engineer will come up when we ask him to do so and plug a hand crank in and wind up spinning a flywheel around and then he will pull a lever on the outside of the engine that engages that flywheel with the engine so it's called meshing the flywheel which will then turn the engine over but before he does that we have to do some things in the cockpit obviously so first things we're going to do is turn the magnetos to both we're going to turn the the battery is already on actually we need to set the fuel mixture, so we're going to push the fuel mixture to rich or 100%. We're going to move the propellers to high, or we'll put them halfway actually for the moment. Um, okay, so we'll just have a look around, everything else looks fine. The one thing that's going to be unusual to you if you've flown more modern aircraft is there is a fuel wobble pump here, which builds up fuel pressure on these needles up here into the engine which we will need. There's also the primer. We're going to have to prime the, the cylinders. So we move the primer to the left engine. We do the left engine first. We turn the master switch on for the primer and we give it one, two, three, four, five pumps with the mass. And then if you notice now, if we wobble this fuel pump, you can see the needles moving on the fuel pressures. But we need to come back to that because we're going to need to do that in concert with the engineer working outside on winding up the engines. So if we ask him to wind up the flywheel on engine number one or the left engine, you'll see a some steps appear behind. Here we go. It's a shame you don't get a character actually stood there, but you can't have everything, I guess, in the first version of an aeroplane. He's attaching the hand crank, which you can now see, and winding the engine up. So you can see here there's a percentage of how much he has wound the engine up. Meanwhile, while we've been watching that, our fuel pressure has dropped to zero again. So we'll have to get ready with pumping up the fuel pressure. You want it to between three and five, apparently. And then we go mesh the flywheel. And the engine's running. Oh, we nearly got it running. It just cut out. 
So we go again. I didn't give it enough throttle. I should have edged the throttle forwards. So I'm going to move the throttles forwards. So we're asking him to wind again. So he's winding up the flywheel. We get ready on the, f the wobble pump. Get the pressure up. And we wait a few seconds. Give it till about 25, 20, 25% of him speeding it up and then mesh and we have an engine excellent okay so then we need to do switch the engine selector over here for the primer to the right engine one two three four five on the right engine remember we've got the magneto on for the right engine as well we pull back the clipboard again so this is the same as shouting out of the window for the engineers to go whoa I didn't have enough didn't have enough um, engine running there so let's do that again just shows how temperamental these engines are doesn't it whoops I've put the clipboard away and I didn't mean to um, so we can wind up the flywheel again so he's going to get the ladder back out sorry mate get the crank back out so let's push these engines up to a bit more throttle it's a bit like starting a lawnmower, really, but on an enormous scale. So wind up the flywheel, please. And while you're doing that, we're going to go back to the left engine again. Give it a few pumps. Give the right engine a few pumps. Wait for the speed to increase of him spinning that engine for us and go. Okay. So we've got the engine selected to the right. The magnetos are on for the right engine. So we'll get him to spin up the right engine now. So you can notice now, now that engine's running, the pressure's keeping itself. So we've got to use the wobble pump. And we'll see he started to crank, look. So this is all about experience, about knowing how much throttle to give it. So he's coming up to 14%, 15%. We're going to get to about 20 before we kick it in. There's 20%. We've got good pressure. Mesh the flywheel. And we've got engines. Excellent. So now we can go back to the previous page. And we can say, remove the wheel chocks, please. And we'll put the clipboard away. We're also going to go and turn on some lights. So we want the nav lights, please. We, there's various lights you can have around the cockpit. Obviously, you're not going to see those unless you're in the dark. So let's go and have a look outside at this thing. It's a bit noisy, isn't it? So let's turn this down here so you can hear me. So this is the Boeing 247D. Okay. There are no flaps. This aeroplane predates aeroplanes having flaps. If we go and have a look around, the controls, it does have trim tabs. It was one of the first aeroplanes in the world to have trim tabs on elevators, ailerons, and rudder. So we are going to go in taxi aim. So I've removed the wheel chocks, remember. Wheel brakes off, or parking brakes off, I should say. And we are going to gently roll out towards the runway. It's a bit of a handful on the ground. It's 
So we'll do this from outside so you can get to see it taxiing nicely. So I'm having to be careful on the throttle the entire time. If I pull the throttles back too much, it, we are at risk of, of killing the engines basically, so we're just going to gently taxi our way down. Well, we could taxi up onto the grass with this aircraft. It's designed for grass airstrips. But it's an awesome looking aeroplane. An awesome sounding as you can hear. And look, you can even see this suspension struts working away. Okay, where are we then? Just coming around to the runway. So we're at Biggin Hill in the south of England. It seems somehow appropriate for an old aircraft. It does have differential brake controls, so you can manoeuvre using differential brakes. As you can see, I haven't got them configured properly. Maybe I have. Anyway, let's go and get this onto the runway. Centre our view up. Easing the throttle forwards. Tail comes up. Just hold the centre line with the rudder. Start to rotate. It's actually, it's very nice to fly. Very docile in the air, doesn't go tremendously fast. Obviously we're not thrashing the engines. So we're going to do a left circuit around Biggin. You can see London over there in the distance, skyscrapers, and the commercial area. And we're just going to do a nice gentle circuit around. So in terms of instruments, you've got a gyro. So this isn't what you think it is. Um, it's got a magnetic compass. So let's just have a look at that while we're flying. So we wait for this to stabilize. So we're at about 290 degrees. So what we can do is go and calibrate this to the direction we're going, which will be there. And that gives us a more modern view of our heading than a traditional binnacle compass, whereas everything's reversed but it's subject to gyro drift. This is very early technology, remember? So, you know, they were thinking these would be good things to have, 
but they weren't perfected very much yet. So obviously you can see the smoke and the heat coming out of the engine the whole time. This isn't the cleanest aeroplane. And if we thrash the engines, we can set fire to them. And if you land with your gear up, you can fold the propellers around the engine casings. So we're just going to do a quick circuit to come back in and land, because I don't want this video to go on forever and ever. So the Boeing is su surprisingly fast in a straight line. So you've got airspeed here, look, we're creeping up. I'm not at full throttle, we're creeping up towards 150 knots. It will do about 180 at cruise. It's worth remembering you don't have a pressurised cabin, so you need to be mindful of the altitude you climb to. Okay, it's just keeping an eye on Begin Hill over there. Otherwise, it's it's remarkably good fun. Got landing lights. So we're going to move to the left side. They'll come on. Can't really see them in the daytime, but very cool aeroplane. Very noisy aeroplane. Okay, how are we doing in terms of the airfield? Okay, we're going to turn back in then. So we pull the throttles back. If we pull the throttles right back, you get a pretty good klaxon to tell you don't do that. Okay, so let's get the gear back down. a while for the gear to come down and once you get the gear down the airspeed has just fallen off a cliff because we've got some quite significant drag hanging on hanging out of the bottom of the aeroplane now. Once we get back on the ground we'll have a quick look at it with the um, all the doors open because yeah it really is quite something to see with all the baggage and, you know, payload and fuel. And it's very, very cool. Okay, so we're just approaching big in. Coming in just over 80 knots. It's very, very easy to fly. Just getting the engine started is the only fun in games, really. And like I said, it's a bit like a temperamental lawnmower, but on a huge scale. Once you know the routine and once you know where the throttles should be, and once you know where your fuel pressure should be at you know turning over the engines, you'll be fine. The huge sort of shock with this plane is it's only £15, pounds, that's about $20. That's very, very reasonable. And for what it gives you, it's actually pretty stunning. And the simulator has paused on me at an absolutely perfect moment. Look at that. Thanks to Sobo. Apparently there is a major update to the sim coming that's going to fix a lot of these issues with pauses and crashes. So yeah, let's just keep our fingers crossed that they remain true to their word and a lot of these problems go away. So I can't believe I'm the only person that sees this regularly. There we go. And the plane's just, just before touchdown as well, look. So it always chooses the best moment for that to happen, doesn't it? waiting for the tail to fall. Tail's down. Just have a look next side. Just feathering the brakes to slow us down. Nearly stalled the engines. That's some 
big old engines, aren't they? One of the most difficult things I think about this aircraft is because it does have no form of autopilot whatsoever, it hasn't even got a gyro for the, you know, to hold a compass direction, you have to hand fly it all the time. So you can't even step away really to grab a drink. So if you're doing a long flight in the simulator, it's, you have to bear that in mind. You have to pause it if you need to step away. If you really can't, you know, be away from it. Okay, so we're back on the ground, parking brake back on, let's go and look inside, so obviously to kill the engines as you would with any other plane, you can just pull the, the fuel back and the engines will die. Yeah, you can feather the propellers as well, it's got full feathering controls and, and it reacts aerodynamically correctly to, the, to that. But one of the nice things is once you're back on the ground, you can actually say, OK, we want the wheel chocks out, please. We'll have the passenger stairs, the passenger door, the baggage car, the loading platform, the front cargo door, the baggage rear door, rear uh, ladder left engine, ladder right engine. Let's go and have a look and we'll see those things appear bit by bit around the aircraft. Um, we'll see the doors open. And here they come and the various doors so if we go and have a look around the aeroplane it's actually quite stunning to to wander around inside so yeah you can see it's um it's quite cool the door on the toilet door works so the, the um the stool on the toilet door works you can actually fold it up and down you can open the toilet and go inside and out of the toilet so yeah it's um an amazing piece of development really uh, how do we get this? So, <laughs> so you can see very, very quickly. If we go to the drone camera, that might be a bit a quicker way to look around it. So you can see there's the the baggage, which will obviously the number of bags in here adheres to the load you have chosen. The the engines are a masterpiece, all of their own making. So you can see the quality of them. You can take the cowls off as well. So if we go, if I can remember how to do it. Oh, the cameras have got muddled up in Flight Sim. There's a bit of a bug in Flight Sim with that, where the end and insert keys can become confused from each other. So if we come back in here, we can say, Uh, where were we? We can say take the cowls off and put oil pans under the engines. So if we go back to the drone camera now, I mean, look at the quality of the rendering. It's ridiculous. It really, really is. Obviously, we've got some oil dripping out of the engines there. So there you go, that's the Boeing 247D in Flight Simulator. It's absolutely incredible. It sounds great, it flies great, it's very temperamental on the ground, but that's of the era. And obviously at some point in the future I'll look at doing a navigation video using that network of navigation beacons, which should be good fun. It comes, it's worth pointing out just before we finish, the aircraft comes with the performance file for Little Nav Map. It also comes with the waypoints of all of the, or sorry, the positions of all of the radio beacons for Little Nav Map. So you can put them on your chart for when you're navigating by them. Obviously, you can still cheat in Little Nav Map and show your aircraft position, but if you turn that off, you can play the game properly of being in the 1930s navigating by the Morse code radio beacons. So there you go. We'll have another video on that when I've learnt it myself, which might take some time. <laughs> but there you go, it's the Boeing 247D in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's awesome. And it's only £15 or $20. So go check it out. Okay, I'm going to stop there.